Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zamir Zuhair bin Zubaidi. Matrix number 059615. We are from Group 12 and are presenting about an interesting topic which is retirement planning of measured employees in crucial times. Before that, let us see what is meant by retirement. Retirement is the moment when an employee stops working as a result of reaching the statutory retirement age and is 60 in Malaysia. People have their own options to plan the future. Some, some of them will choose for government pension plan and some others on the other hand will go for employee provident funds or EPF. However, since 2020 when the pandemic COVID-19 has hit the world, the awareness of retirement planning among public has been lowered since people are having a very tough time relating to employees' financial positions. In Malaysia, the Employees Provident Fund or EPF is a mandatory social security institution established under the Employees Provident Fund Act 1981. Contributions to EPF are required by the Act for both employees and employers and it includes both private and non-pensionable public sector employees. However, some employees contribute more than the minimum statutory rate as part of additional fringe benefits to employees. Because Malaysia are still ill prepared for retirement, their retirement confidence will suffer. According to NASA's global survey, there are five main reasons for Malaysian lack of confidence in facing their retirements. And these are incapabilities related to retirement, such as loss of physical ability, losing the ability to meet basic needs, being a burden on family or friends, and lack of sufficient funds to live comfortably. From the standpoint of retirement confidence, the attitude is a significant factor that influences an individual's behavior as he or she approaches retirement. Working people's positive attitude toward retirement planning is also one of the factors that influence them to make good retirement plans. It is necessary to have financial knowledge as well as the understanding, confidence and motivation to make financial judgment and decisions. The findings show that people with a high level of financial literacy are more likely to save than those who with a low level of financial literacy. Another method for saving during emergency is structuring the saving for a long period. This method is the result of the teaching of the story of the Prophet Yusuf in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Yusuf said for seven years you should work on the ground as usual allowing the harvest which you have obtained in it to remain except for a little you eat. Then there will be seven terrible years in which you will eat all the you have keep except a small part of what you have saved. Surah Yusuf. This method can also be used in retirement. When we retire, we only need to take a sufficient amount which is the same amount when we work before this. This way, we are going to survive for longer and we don't have to work again. Not only that, but the teaching of this sentence can also be used in our situation when an emergency such as COVID occurs. According to H. Muhammad, 2031, almost 2.6 million contributors to the Employees Provident Fund have saving of less than RM1000 ringgit in account 1. It shows that it is an emergency action to continue living. So the recommendation is to make sure not to use all this amount for the present time only. Structuring the fund from saving for a longer period as a precaution. In conclusion, uh, the awareness of saving management in time uh, of emergency uh, such as six months of salary saving and structuring the saving for long period will not interfere the, uh, with the EPF saving as well can solve the problem of retirement planning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome everyone. My name is Muhammad Faiz bin Kamaruddin. Today we going to talk about uh, lifestyle changes that can help you increase your saving using digital investing and focus on MCC found in retirement planning during the COVID-19 pandemic in Malaysia. Okay, let's start with increasing saving. 
With the economy uncertainty caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, it's more important than ever to have a solid saving plan in a place. One way to do this is to create a budget and stick to it. This means setting aside a certain amount of money is meant for saving and not spending more than you can afford. And another way to increase your saving is use digital tools. There are a few variety of apps and websites that can help you to track your spending and set saving goals. For example, you could use a budgeting app to set a goal of a saving a certain of money each month and track your progress toward that goal. Now let's talk about investing. Investing is a great way to grow your money over time. However, it is important to do your research and invest in something that aligns with your risk tolerance and financial goals. For example, if you're looking for a more conservative investment option, you could consider investing in a savings account or a fixed deposit. If you are comfortable with more risk, you could consider investing in stock or mutual funds. Finally, let's talk about the importance of an emergency fund. An emergency fund is a savings account that you could use to cover unexpected expenses such as a medical emergency or job loss. It is important to have at least 3 to 6 months worth of leasing expenses saving in a emergency fund so you are prepared for anything. They are for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Alif Akmal bin Abdul Rahim. My metric number is 059126. I now I will present on the topic of budget awareness. Smart budget management is important to ensure our financial resources are sufficient and avoid making mistakes by committing good risk. The 50, 30 and 20 budgeting strategy is one of the phases they may take while creating their budget. According to the formula, you should allocate 50% of your after-tax income for necessities, 30% for desires, and 20% for savings. The first guideline which reflects necessities is a 50% split. The items they need to exist and pay their debts are considered necessities. This covers electricity, food, insurance, and minimum debt payment. The following percentage is 30%, which stands for will. All the things we spend money on but don't truly need are considered one. This covers dining out, clothes, shopping, holiday, and entertainment subscription such as Netflix. And the last one is 20% means savings. Putting away 20% of your pay every month can help you build a better, longer lasting saving plan. Whether your end goal is to save up for an emergency, make a long-term plan for your finance, or save up for a down payment on a house. Next is about the awareness of passive income. Income derived from sources other than an employer or a contractor is called passive income. In order to secure in possession of money in retirement, passive income is important to guarantee the supply of money in the future. The example of passive income source is such as online business or rental source. Next, there are three types of passive income which is buy, create and contribute. For buy, passive income investment include dividend stocks, bonds, annuities and rental properties. You could also buy a small business. And second is great. You can develop a product or service that generates a cash. And the last one is contribute. You can put money into a businesses that already exist or a limited partnership. You could also put up for sale and rent something you already own. One way is to rent out a room in your house or your car. Next is benefit of getting passive income. There are four benefits of getting passive income which are Continuous cash flow, monetary flexibility, decreased tension and stress, and they are able to work and live wherever they want. With a steady income, people don't have to worry about retirement. 
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, people need not fear being laid off. If the primary income stop, stops, passive income may help. They don't have to depend on retirement money if they have financial problems. They may purchase a home or car to rent. Next is monetary flexibility. Passive income is not just about making more money. If they have enough way to make money, they might be able to live without working or depending on others. And next is the benefit of getting passive income is it will decrease attention and stress. One of the main sources of worry for individuals is not having enough to cover their expenses. With passive income, they won't have to stress about not being able to pay for their expenses. And the last one is, the benefit of passive income is that they are able to work and live wherever they want. By working to earn passive income, they can live freely without any pressure The individual who only depend on one source of income. That's all from me. Thank you. In a nutshell, we can conclude that planning or preparing for retirement should be everyone's top priority in managing their finances. Citizens need to develop their financial literacy by increasing their knowledge in basic financial management. We also need to ensure that we always have a backup fund for a sudden emergency. And last but not least, we need to learn from the motivational tale of Yusuf alayhi salam where it has provided us with advice on how to avoid poverty in our enlightened eras. That's all from us. Thank you for listening.